this is one dollar in jamaican currency and if you're jamaican or if you've spent some time here you would have known that the value of this is literally next to none like seriously there is nothing nothing at all that you can buy with a dollar nothing not even one sweet two dollar three dollar still not make no difference however if we were living 50 years ago one dollar would have been a lot of money if you had one dollar 50 years ago you would have been considered fortunate maybe you're thinking this video will be about inflation but no it's not today i'll be talking about money but not in a way that you are used to seeing on the internet now for the ones who weren't told this by their parents if you are around my age group or younger you would find it very hard to believe that this one dollar was one day paper money back then and having a money in paper versus coin would indicate that it's more valuable relatively i'm going to show you what a one dollar used to look like back then but before i do that you have to subscribe and if you don't subscribe your wi-fi will chip out at nine o'clock p.m tonight <laughs> Alright, so this is it. This is the one dollar. I'll put a clearer picture when I'm editing the video as a B-roll. If you were paying attention in school, you would have realized who is on this. So the person on this money, which was a major thing back then, is Sir Alexander Bustamante, the first Prime Minister of Jamaica. It's the same Bustamante that's on the one dollar, but we really don't remember anymore because we don't use it. Really don't. So in this video, I will be explaining the history of Jamaica's currency. When was it released and what were we using before, before that, you know? And also how it has transformed since then. And I'll throw in some other information that will be useful. Just watch the whole video, all right? So back then, Jamaican banknotes were released in seven different forms. And this little boy right here is one of them. So the one that was released in 1970, but they withdrew it in 1999 from circulation. We still have one. A couple of us in Jamaica still have one. But this right here, I mean, it don't really have any use anymore, but just a little memorable piece of Jamaica's history. You know, you're looking at your wallet and find a one dollar. So, like many of the cultures in the world, Jamaica's first set of persons were tailors. And the tailors used a barter trading system, and that's the exchange of goods or service with other goods or service. <laughs> so, like, me, what's your care for you? and you cut the grass, you know, trade. <laughs> so they didn't really use money. Gold was a part of the Taino culture at the time, but it is said that they used it mainly for decorative purposes. While in other places in the world, gold was used as a form of transaction, but like the Tainos never really, they never really care. Fast forward to the 1450s when the Spanish came on the island, and you know, they invade and then kill off a lot of the, yeah, you know we go. But yeah, when they came here, they started trading with the Tainos using glass beads, and other trinkets. By the early 1500s, coins were in use and they were very light and very thin. It was made from copper and it was called Maravedis or Maravedis. Now this originated in Santo Domingo and it was stamped with markings like keys and anchors which differentiated the value. During the time when Jamaica was a Spanish colony, little was done to develop the natural resources of Jamaica because Jamaica was seen as a country that is less valuable and the others in the Caribbean because like the others had gold and stuff and Jamaica just just did it so the main thing here at the time was agriculture by the 17th century Jamaica became a British colony and it received a large portion of coins at the time the most popular were the Spanish silver coins or the eight real coins eight real coins like that's it that's the name for you like that's the one they were using then the British came over and then they get some more of it. It was also referred to as pieces of eight, and this form of currency stayed in up until 1839. So that was quite a long time, because I mean, the British took over the island from long time, and then this form of money was still being used. But maybe in 1839, somebody look and say, oh, you know what, this can't continue. Jamaica will now start using the British system. So yeah, in 1839, Jamaica adopted the British currency. Spanish gold coins were also used one and two little places for a while. All right, so to summarize the other things, a lot of political issues were happening at the time. The British tried to bring forward some currency and it was rejected. There was a time when they were using an exchange rate that was slightly different from the one in England and it caused some confusion. Just a weird time, but fast forward to a time that really matters. 
a time more modern. So the thing is, before Jamaican independence, we were using the British currency. So we had pounds, shillings, and pence. So I took a look at the money that we were using back then, the pounds, pence, and shillings, and they actually look cool. I'll show you later on in the video. Fast forward to the big year, 1969. In 1969, guess what happened? Just guess. Like, it's really an important year in Jamaica's history. So on Monday, September 8th, 1969, that was known as the changeover day. That's quite a simple name though, like, <laughs> they've never have nothing else to name it. <laughs> Simply put, changeover day was when Jamaica got its official currency for itself. You know, like when you used to drive your mother car, but now you buy a car for yourself. Yeah. But the thing is, at the time, you didn't realize that the car was a bad bike. You thought it would have made sense. But now look at us. <laughs> out the door, you see someone that you know, and they ask you how you are, and you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. So after 149 years of using the British currency, Jamaica finally got its own. This date also marked the beginning of all bank transactions to be done in dollars and cents, replacing the use of pounds, shilling, and pence. So yeah, that's Monday, September 8, 1969. So you had a few persons who were influential in helping Jamaicans understand the structure of the new currency. These persons were Louise Bennett, also known as Miss Lou, Eric Coverley, and Mars Ran, also known as Ranny Williams, you must know Ranny Williams and a couple other persons. I know this might sound obvious, but I have to say it because some countries do their thing different. So in Jamaica, when we're writing the money, we write the dollar sign before the number. One of the two ways to specify that is Jamaican dollars, you can either write J and then dollar sign or the dollar sign on the money and then JMD at the end. But if you use the J before the dollar sign, like just J, dollar sign and then the money, it is still accurate. Just that that way is not really popular nowadays. Also, something I wanted to remember at the time, and by at the time I mean 1949 to 1965, there was also another currency being used on the island. So yes, yeah, separate from the British one that I explained earlier, there was also another one being used between 1949 and 1965. And this one was called the British West Indies Dollar. It was used by Eastern Caribbean territories, British West Indies, British Guyana, and also Jamaica. That money was replaced by the Eastern Caribbean dollar. I'll do a separate video on that. But back to the whole thing here. It is not abnormal to have two currencies floating around as accepted form of transaction in a country. Just ask Bahamas. In Jamaica, right now, the only one is Jamaican dollars. The Jamaican dollars that we are used to today is completely different from the one that was released in 1969. So five coins were originally introduced. So we had the one cent, five cent, 10 cent, 20 cent, 25 cent. And this is what they looked like. And these coins began circulating on the 8th of September, 1969. The material used to make all of these, except for the one cent, is called copper nickel, while the one cent was made from copper. But shortly after 1970, they changed the copper to bronze for the one cent. The Minister of Finance and the Bank of Jamaica came together and said, you know what, let's just put these two persons on the most important money, the one dollar and the five dollar. And these persons were Sir Alexander Bustamante and Sir Norman Manley. So Alexander Bustamante was on the one dollar and Norman Manley was on the five dollar. These two guys are said to be the founding fathers of modern Jamaica. The Jamaica we know after independence. So this is what the paper money released at the time looked like. I have the two dollar and the five dollar in an album. But the thing is I couldn't find it for the recording of this video so I could only show you the one dollar. Comment below if you have any of these at home or if your parents have them. All right, all right, all right. Many of you may have known what those looked like, or maybe you have them. Honestly, I don't know anybody to this day who currently have the $20. If you have the $20, comment below. I need to know. All right, you see this now? You can't tell me say you know this. Many of you who are watching this 
don't know what this look like never seen this this is your first time seeing this so what i'm about to show you is what the pound pens and shillings look like before 1969 All right, cool. Now the thing with this video, it gets more interesting as it goes along. Now what I'm about to share with you, persons of my generation will find this a bit harder to believe. But you know like how you have some countries where the currency is used in the country and it is also used in other countries? That used to happen with Jamaica. Yeah. Other countries used to use Jamaican dollars. What, 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 we are, we are, we go. So I could only confirm two of them. And these two countries were former dependencies of Jamaica. And these two countries are Cayman Islands and Turks and Caicos Islands. All right, so it didn't state exactly when they started using it, but I'm assuming it's 1969. Cayman Islands stopped using Jamaican currency in 1972. It's like them get a little three year run and get fed up. Like, say, oh, this not, it's not what I said. So in 1972, Cayman said, Mm, thanks for the help, but at my time now, I'm going to make my own currency. And that's exactly what they did, Cayman Island Dollars, also known as CI Dollars. And currently, this is the exchange rate for one CI Dollar. So you have Turks and Caicos over this side now. Not sure if they did it because Cayman did it. So what Turks and Caicos did is they swapped out the Jamaican currency and adopted the US currency. This is the exchange rate for one US dollar right now. So Cayman changed it in 1972 and Turks and Caicos did it in 1973. And up to this day, Turks and Caicos still use the US dollar as their official currency. Jamaicans and Caribbean persons would have known this already. But for persons outside of that, I'm about to explain what the currency now is like. So in coins, we have the $1, $5, $10, $20. That's it for coins. And for the banknotes, we have 50, 100, 500. 1,000, 5,000, that's sad, but yeah, that's how it is. The nickname for $100 is bills, so you just hear too much for that, two bills, three bills, five bills, you know, they are bills. <laughs> for the $500, they call it nanny, I hardly use the name though, but it's a thing, nanny, nanny of the maroons. For the $1,000, we call it grand. I will call it manly, that's because Michael Manly is on it. In selected parts of Jamaica, you will hear the term manly. But everywhere in Jamaica, you will definitely hear grand. The nickname for the $5,000, oh, the $5,000. The nickname for that is Shera, because Q Shera, Q Lawson Shera, yeah, the person who is on it. You hardly hear the term Shera on the streets, but you hear it in songs. The other banknotes and coins, they don't have any nickname, or none that I know of. And this is what the current currency looks like. I'm sure you've learned a lot from this. Like, share, comment, subscribe. It don't finish yet. If you have a parent or a grandparent who was alive and old enough during the time of the changeover day in 1969, September 8th, I would like to do a little sit down interview and talk about their experience of what life was like during the time of the changeover day. You know, maybe them have some stories. I heard that the transition was smooth because persons were well educated on how things work. I think a change like that would have been harder to do now in the age of information and misinformation. If you've made it this far in the video, I know you like the video. Subscribe to my second channel. I'm almost at 100 subscribers over there. Feel free to DM me on Instagram about a topic that you would like me to do a video on. Enjoy the signature outro that you've all grown to love. Well, most of you, according to my audience retention report.
So in coins, we have $1, $5, $10, $50.